Welcome back to the Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. It has been a big week when it comes to sports events. They have been cancelled left, right and centre here in the world. But the first one in the country now to cancel the entire season is the Kenya Rugby Union. And to explain that to us live is the chairman, Kenya Rugby Union, Odwar Gangla, here to talk to us about that. Mr. Chairman, welcome to Y254. We, because of the coronavirus pandemic, in normal circumstances, circumstances you could be here in studio with us but today because of technology we can find you at home how are you doing can find you at home how are you doing um, um, uh, thank you, no, sir. Uh, yes i think it's important to observe the guidelines of uh, the ministry of health and who so that uh, this virus uh, can be extinguished yeah how are you feeling? Are you safe where you are? You can tell us about that. Yes, I've been. Uh, I'm on self quarantine at home. So it's just me and my and my family. Uh, yeah, and so it's tough. You know, Saturday is always a, a rugby day, and uh, we spend a lot of time out meeting people, enjoying games, and just catching up with friends and, and family and and the like uh, and. Uh, it's not been possible. Uh, I think for us now, this is probably a full month since we we cancelled, uh, we we suspended the league. And uh, if you think about it, our league was not the climax. Uh, we'd have had the Kenya Cup final last weekend. Uh, this weekend, actually, we are normally in Nakuru over Easter for the Great Rift Valley tennis side, uh, which is a really nice tournament. And and then next weekend, we'd have had the Enterprise Cup. But also next weekend on 19th, we'd have had Kenya women playing Colombia at the RFU. The in the yeah, the test match in the country. And then on uh, Sunday 19th, we'd have had the start of the Bathurst Cup, the under-20 Africa competition of which we are the defending champions. So we've seen uh, enormous disruption in our calendar and activity for the year. And uh, also, with these disruptions, there are, there are a lot of consequences, especially commercial partners with sponsors. And uh, we then have to reorganize ourselves uh, to fit into the new world order, if I can call it that. And you see, yeah. if, so, yes. Uh, we, we received your statement on Thursday, actually, that you have cancelled the league altogether. What does this mean for Kenya Rugby Union now that the league has been cancelled all through the season? Been cancelled all through the season. Let, let's take a, a step back. We were yes. to have our playoffs and uh, conclude our season uh next weekend the 18th of uh, april was the last day in the season because we start in july and we run up to april so the timing for our season has actually come to an end now what triggered the decision is uh if you look at what's happening in kenya today i think there's been a spike in the number of incidences we've also seen all the advisories from the, the government uh, that uh, we are looking at a situation where the situation is likely to get worse. If you look at what has happened in all the other countries, and that's why there's a lot of uh, activity around uh, around uh, preparedness. I've seen several counties putting together facilities. Government is going to start mass testing, I think, next week. We've seen breakthroughs from Camry. So the question really is, when do you play these playoffs? Yeah. Uh, no one knows when the corona is going to come to an end. And our season, from a timing point of view, has come to an end. If we also look at what other federations have done uh, yeah. in the international federations, uh, people postpone to a particular window. So if you look at the Olympics, yeah. they've postponed it by a year to, to next year. Yeah. If you look at uh, World Rugby, uh, the seven series, 
the tentative dates are in September. The keyword is tentative. And again, they've been pushed to September because in September, there's no world rugby competition happening. It's normally the off season time, then you're preparing for the next year. So they've pushed it then. In our case, our off season is from April. And you know, we start the new season in July. Yeah. The other thing which we have to be cognizant about under the KRU regulations, because of player welfare and safety, uh, yes. we have a mandatory four week rest period after the season. Yeah. And then we have again in the regulations an eight week period for pre season. Now, we've already taken the four week, I mean, people have been off rugby for four weeks. Yes. Uh, and then we do some exercises at home, ETC, but we can assume they've had their rest. Yeah. So even if this corona thing uh, is sorted, we still need to give yeah. the teams that period to get yeah. ready, yeah, so that they can play. We cannot yeah. also take a risk and tell people go play the playoffs when they're not in the body condition to do so. I think it would be very responsible of us as the union. Yeah. So, guided by our regulations around how a season can move, knowing what's important from a player welfare point of view, and just looking at the timeline, we then said, look, uh, also the clubs have been asking us what's going to happen, the, the media, the sponsors, and uh, even the options that eventually came to the board were options which have been discussed, because there are not that many options. You either say, this has been a bad year. It's like when we had World War, during World War II, rugby was not played. <laughs> it's not different. It's yeah. not being played anywhere. It's not, also not being played today. So do you want to hold on to this season and then create a backlog of fixtures for the coming year, which is for us is starting in July. So let's look at our case scenario. If in July, we're not able to play the seventh circuit, we'll make exactly the same decision. And then we say, now let's wait. If in September we play, then you play the fixtures that you're supposed to play in September. And I'll explain to you what people don't understand. Okay. We have a global calendar of when we play our matches, whether it's Kenya 15s or, or Kenya 7s. Yes. And our season fits into that global calendar. Okay. Yeah. And nothing has changed in that global calendar. So everyone is hoping things will normalize maybe later in the year. So the moment our season ends, in May, Kenya Simbas was to start playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the other players take a break and we, play, we have our internationals because that's the yeah. win. So we have to make an assumption that May of next year, we will be playing Kenya internationals. Then we yeah. work backwards from May of last year and say, when do you want the season to end? Then yeah. if you say this is when the season needs to end, then we must start again our season this year in October, the 15 aside. We yeah. do the sevens between July and September to help us choose our team, which then goes into the World Series, which starts in November. Yeah. So there's actually a methodology to the time slot. So you cannot just say, we hold on to the league and wait at infinitum until yeah. whatever. So if in July we can't play rugby, in all likelihood, we won't have the seven circuit. If in September we cannot start, uh, I mean, in October we can't start Kenya Cup, which will be very unfortunate, the decision is the same. It's just that yeah. the window for playing this season's uh, championship, in our view, is, is, is complete. Yeah. Question which I was going to ask you about the calendar, and you have actually put it right there according to the methodology and everything. What, what, what I want also our viewers to understand is, uh, you, you are partners. You, you, are the, you are the people who are actually direct in contact with your partners in the marketing, your partners who are give the sponsors and everything. For them, how did they take this decision so far? Because it is not only rugby which is affected, also them, they are affected directly or indirectly. Or indirectly. Yes, we've been in consultation with our, our sponsors and uh, we are because uh, we, we work with them. And uh, today everyone is thinking about survival. Yeah. yeah. And uh, everyone is going to avoid anything that goes contrary to the world WHO regular guidance on how to manage corona. It's a responsible thing to do. So given that case, we don't really have too many options. 
Two, a sponsor sponsors you because you have activities. Yeah? yeah. They put money so that they can derive commercial benefit from those activities. When you don't have activities, then that money doesn't flow. I was just calculating the impact of, say, something like Bathurst Cup not happening. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's setting for KRU. It's, it's a very significant yes. financial uh, loss for us as well as the union because yeah. now uh, the partners who we had negotiated with to commit are not going to release that money to us. So yeah. it's very difficult, but I think all sponsors say as soon as things normalize, then we, we have to relook at, uh, at, at the situation. So the choice we had was to either say, because the time has elapsed, let's kill yeah. this 2019-2020 season, and then we, we start afresh. We hope we can start in July if things yeah. improve. But that will be time for the seventh circuit, and then uh, we, we move on to the 15s. Chairman, uh, let me put your, your background. I understand you are an investment banker before you came into the rugby circles and took over with the running of rugby and everything. And when you look all over the world, sports is one industry that has been affected the most. In your perspective, in your view from where you are at the moment, many people I've talked to is they cannot quantify the losses and that we have lost as an industry in sports all over the world. Just put a, put a little bit of perspective in that worldwide, the sports industry, how has it been impacted by this pandemic? By this pandemic? Yes, that, uh, that's very significant losses. Uh, I've not actually run through the numbers, but I'll just give you uh, the KRU case. We're looking at Bathurst Cup with a roughly committed income of about 50 million shillings, uh, which was committed, whether it's government, Rugby Africa, other commercial sponsors. That's one event, eight days, 50 million of revenue. Uh, we're going to host about 280 players from African countries because the white team is supposed to come plus the rugby executive, rugby Africa executive was actually coming to have their board meeting in Nairobi. So then you look at from the 50 million, maybe the expenses would come to about 40, 42 million, which would then go back into the economy because these guys have to stay somewhere, they have to travel, they have to eat, etc. So there's a multiplier effect from that. And then we're looking at retaining some, some money from managing the event because also you have gate revenue, you have the food and beverage sales. So out of that opportunity, it's a significant revenue loss for us. Because if you look at it, it's easily 25% of our annual revenue. And we think this thing would be as big as, say, a Safari Sevens for us. Yes. So now, if you go to something like, say, Premier League internationally, I think the impact is bigger because the TV rights run into billions of dollars. I think it's six or seven billion dollars a year. That's just TV. Then if you look, they have much day revenue. They have merchandising revenue. They have their sponsors. I mean, so easily just English Premier League must be an ecosystem of about 15, 20, maybe 20 billion dollars a year. Now the thing has stopped. Yeah. Then look at an industry like, say, betting. Even here in Kenya, yeah. you see our betting is based on uh, international football, especially EPL. And some of yeah. our partners are, are betting companies. So immediately people are not making odds. So that has also stopped. And you can go on and on and on. So the impact is, is very, very significant. I'm not even counting the clubs, because you see the clubs pay for themselves to come to events, CTC, and they have yeah. some of them have budgets of 30 million, some three, four million. So it's a, it's a huge loss. But look, this is an act of God. Yeah. How do we, we had planned to be in Kakamega last week, Nakuru this week, and then Nairobi, Nairobi next week for the internationals. And there's really nothing we can do. Yeah. yeah. So the conversation with you is, uh, we saw in Belgium, they actually set a president where they stopped the league at where it is and handed the trophy to Club Bruges, who are now the champions at the moment. And now for you here in the country, you're the first sports federation to come out and say that, hey, for us, we have cancelled the entire season. So what advice 
can you give to the other federations? Because I know even them, they are in the same, same situation where you are and arrived into this decision. Into this decision. Okay, first maybe let me just clarify. Uh, the, the league has been played up to the end of the, can I call it, round robin stage. What was yes. left was the playoffs. Now, all the results up to the round robin result still stand. And yes. we'll even use them next year when it comes to seeding and things like those. Uh -huh. Now, if you look at uh, the, the situation of Club Bruges, is very different because I think mathematically, I don't think any other team would have caught up with them. And they were using a straight league format. I also think in the case of Liverpool, had they won maybe two games, it would be very difficult to say you can't declare them champions because no one would have caught up with them. But our format is very different because our winner is determined through a competitive match because we have a final, we have a semi-final. And I'll give you some history. Last year, Cabras were number one in the, in the regular season, Cabras yeah. Sugar. Yeah. But then they lost in the final, yet they had home advantage. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the guys who are promoted in the championship to come to Kenya Cup, uh, Kisumu finished number five in the round robin. Yeah. Uh, I think Western Bulls finished number three, but they came and they, they both of them won their semifinals, and that's how they got promoted. Yeah. So it is not automatic that uh, if you are number one and two in uh, championship, you should yeah. be promoted. So that, that was the dilemma which we sort of were dealing with. Then the other thing is, do you start the next season, 2021, 20, 20, 2021, and yeah. also still having pending issues of 2019, 2020, yet it's yeah. something which is outside the control of the union. You don't even know what's going to happen next. So yeah. we didn't want a situation where maybe things normalize in December, then now we're saying, let's finish this season, then we start, then it just becomes messy. So we just say as events are unable to be held, we move on to the next one, and then we'll resume when we can resume. Thank you for coming here on board to talk to us about the cancellation of the league, in particular the Kenya Rugby League so far. Stay safe, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. you go to public places wear your masks two meters away from whoever you're talking to and let's just uh, spend that time well with our families at home and for the rugby players still keep fit if you can it's important yeah thank you Thank well, we have, we have been well, talking have, to been the talking president, to the chairman, the rather, the Kenya chairman Rugby rather, Kenya Rugby Union, and he has been speaking to us about speaking. the decision that they took there about the cancellation of the league in particular. But what are the NBA stars doing during this coronavirus pandemic? Because at the moment, everybody is all about stay at home. Some contacted the virus and they are recovering. Some are still in quarantine, but all the players of the NBA are at home. What are they doing? Let's watch. When we come back, we'll be looking at the fans.